Hello folks, in this video I'm going to continue working on this platformer in Pygame. Uh, last time I got as far as adding in this player sprite and I added in some movement as well so he can move left and right and he can jump, but the image is static so what I want to work on in this video is adding in some animations. Uh, but before I get into that there's one important thing that I also need to add which is a, a frame rate for the game. So to do that I just use uh, three lines of code uh, and it basically uses the built-in timer to allow us to keep track of time and fix the frame rate to a certain number and this will make sure that the game runs at the same speed regardless of what PC you're running it on. So to do that I just need to come up here right at the beginning to the top of the code and just underneath where I've initialized Pygame I will add in a couple of extra things. So first of all I want to define a clock variable and I'm going to make this equal to pygame.time.clock and then I just define a variable for my frame rate. So I'm going to set the FPS to 60 frames per second. So with these defined, I just need to come back into my main game loop. And essentially, rather than just continuously running this as fast as the computer can, I'm going to use that frame rate to limit how quickly it works. So I just say clock, which is that variable I've just defined, dot tick. And the input here is the frame rate itself, which I've also defined as FPS. So that was just a quick thing and probably aren't going to notice any real difference here, but it just fixes the frame rate. So it makes sure there's some kind of consistency with this game. So now I'm going to get into the animation. Uh, all of this I'm going to handle within the player class. So at the moment I've got my init function and I've got the update, which is going to grow quite a lot over time. This is where pretty much everything is going to happen regarding the player controls. So what's happening in the init? is that I'm loading in this image of the player, guy one PNG, I'm scaling it and then I'm saving that and essentially I'm just loading this image and showing on the screen to represent the player. So an animation though is essentially just a series of these still images that are played in order. So I can show you here, this is guy one PNG, but I've also got two, three and four. So essentially as you cycle through them, you're getting an animation. So that's what I need to do. I wanna load in each of these images and then I want to cycle through them within the game in some kind of timed manner. So whenever I'm handling more than one item like this, I just need to create a list. And this list is going to contain guy one, two, three, and four. And then by running through that list, I'll be able to choose which stage of the animation I'm in. So I can begin by creating a blank list first of all. I'm going to do this within my init function, and I'll do it before I load any images in. So this will be self.images and I'm going to start off, I'll just keep it simple, I'll start off with just right, so when he's moving to the right hand side. And this is a blank list, so just a pair of square brackets. Now for this list I also need to be able to track the index. So the index in a list corresponds to which item I want from that list. So I'm going to define a variable called self.index and this is going to start at zero. And the other variable I need is a counter, because I need to be able to control the speed at which this animation runs through. So this will be self.counter and this is also going to be set to zero to start with. Now the next thing I need to do is actually load these images. At the moment I've just got guy one, but I need to load one, two, three, and four. So I could just type them out individually, but because this is a, an option for some kind of iteration, I'm going to use a for loop. So I'll say for num in range. Uh, my range is going to be one, two, three, and four. So I say between one and five, because uh, iterations like this aren't going to include the, the last number. So it's only going to go through to four. So now I can load in the image. And now I want this number, everything else needs to stay the same, but I want this number to change with this num. So I want to put this num variable in here. But of course, I can't directly put that into a string. So I can use Python's format inability for strings to be able to add this number directly into this file name. So I just add some curly brackets around it, and then I start this with an F. So essentially all this is meaning by adding an F in front of the string, it takes whatever's in the curly brackets and adds that into the string itself. So as this iterates, it's going to load in guy one, two, three, and four. So then once I've loaded them in, I can do the same line as I did before. So I still want to scale this image. So I can say image, and in fact, these are all the ones where he's walking to the right. So although I'm only I'm not doing left just yet, I'm going to start off like this just to make it easier afterwards. So image right, meaning when he's moving to the right hand side, 
I'll just copy this transform back up here because I'm still just doing that same scaling of image right. I can now delete this line from before because that's already happening up here. So I'm loading in my image guy one to start with, then I'm scaling it to 4080. Now, that's if, that, if I just stop here, then it's going to go into the next iteration and it's just going to overwrite this. So what I actually need to do at the end of the iteration is add this image right into my overall list of images. So that way, by the end of this for loop, I'm going to have a list that's full of four individual images of guy one, two, three, and four. So to add images or to add anything to a list in Python, you just use the append function. So I say self dot images underscore right, which is the name of my list dot append. And whatever I put in here gets added onto the end of the list. So what I want to add on is this new image, image right. Okay, and that's it. So this alone is going to load in all of my images. But remember, when I started this, I had a self.image variable, and that's the image that I'm actually blitting onto the screen. I've now kind of lost that because I've instead got a list. So what I need to be able to do is still get this self.images variable. So I'm going to type this out, self.image equals. And what I want to be able to do is take an image from this list. So to start with, I just want him to start in a standing position. He's not moving. So I can access my self.images right list. And I'm going to access it at the initial index. So the index, as you remember, this is what I use for accessing anything within the list. It starts at zero anyway. So I'm just going to put self.index in here. So when it's first initialized and then an instance of this player class is created, it loads in all the images and then the actual image that it uses from the images list is the very first one because the index is zero. So I'm just going to run this to see if it works OK. OK, that's fine. So there's no animation yet. I haven't coded that in. But in the background, I know that it's loaded in the images and it's showing me the correct one to start with. So now that this is done, I can handle the actual animation. And all of that is going to happen within the update function. Because remember, the init is just a constructor. It's loaded or it's, it's executed just the first time when I create an instance of this player class. The update is what I'm actually calling throughout the game loop. So I've got my key presses here. I've got gravity. Uh, so what I'll do is in between here, because I'm controlling the player with the buttons here, I'm just going to add in the animation here. So I'll just add a comment to say handle animation. And then I'll look for the code here. So how is this going to work? Now I've got this list images right, which houses all of the individual guy images. And I've got this index, which refers to which one I want to pick in that particular instance. So basically what I want to be doing is just constantly filtering through this index, increasing it at each iteration and calling that image from the from my list. And that's going to give me the impression of an animation. So in here, let's just say self.index increases by one. And as soon as that's increased, I now want to be able to access or rather update my self.image with the next picture from the from the list. So self.image equals Self dot images uh, was it underscore right I called it yeah self dot images underscore right at the position of self dot index now of course if I run this it's going to give me an error almost instantly because this is going to increase the index until it gets to the end of the list and then it's going to go beyond it and that's going to give me an outbound error so I need to make sure that this index can actually exceed the length of that list so that when the animation finishes it should restart again at the beginning. So that's an easy check. I can just say if self.index has gone beyond or is equal to the length of this list, which is my self.images underscore right list. So basically, if I've gone through all of the pictures, I don't want to keep going because then it's going to give me an error. I just want to start at the beginning. So self.index becomes zero. OK, so let's just run this code and see what actually happens. You can see it's working. It is giving me the animation, but basically it's happening at a ridiculous speed. So you're just filtering through them as fast as it can. So that is something that I need to address. And that's why I had this self.counter here. So I don't want to constantly be uh, filtering through and increasing the index at each iteration. That's just way too fast. I need some kind of cooldown. So let's come up into this update. And where I've got these local variables, I'll add another one which is just going to be walk underscore cooldown. And I'll just say 20. So that means 20 iterations need to pass before I update the index. 
So let's add this. Uh, let's wrap this within another if statement. So I'll indent all of that and I'll say if self dot counter is greater than greater than what cooldown, then we do all of this stuff. But we also make sure that we reset self dot counter because otherwise it's just always going to be once it exceeds twenty, it's just going to keep going past it. So self dot counter equals zero. And I actually need to make sure that I increase this counter first of all. So self dot counter plus equals one. So now instead of increasing the index every time, I increase the counter by one. And once it reaches a value of 20 and my walk cooldown, it resets back to zero and my index goes up. So this should slow down the animation quite a bit. There you go. So he's kind of walking a lot slowly, but you notice he's just moving when I'm not actually pressing any keys. So I can still move left and right, but he's just constantly moving. And the reason for that is because I'm kind of doing this just to demonstrate, but basically self.counter is constantly increasing regardless of his actions. Really what I want to be able to do is increase the counter when I'm only pressing the left and right arrow keys. So only when he's actually moving do I want this counter to go up. So that's what I'm going to code in just now. So in here, I'll just say self.counter is increased by one. And I'll copy this down, put this into when I press the right key as well. And now I can delete it from here. So now it's not going to go up all the time. It's only going to go up when I'm pressing the arrow keys. So let's run this code again. Extensionary, and now he's slowly moving. Although I think he was moving a little bit too slowly. So it looks like the walk cooldown that I've picked is maybe a bit too high. So I'll reset that back to 5. However, the reason I wanted to keep it that way to start with is just to show what actually happens in between. So you see, as he's walking, I've let go of the left and right keys, but he's still mid-animation. So I need to address that as well. Now, when the left and right arrow keys are pressed, counter is increasing. But when I release both of those buttons, I want the counter to reset. So let's add this in as an additional if statement. And I can just say here, in fact, I can just copy this one from above. So where I'm saying if key pi game k left essentially is true, uh, I'm now going to look for if it equals false. And I can copy this one down as well because I'm also looking for when the right arrow key is false. So basically when I'm not pressing either left or right, then I want to reset the counter. So self.counter equals zero, at the same time, the index becomes zero. So as soon as the index becomes zero, I'll be able to call the image from the very beginning, which is him just standing around. So I can say self.image equals self.image is right, which is my list, and access it from self.index. All right, so let's try this again. And uh, okay, it's still very slow, but I'm going to try and pause it in during mid walk. And you see there, as soon as I let go, he stops. So that's fine. Now I can set this back to a more reasonable number. Let's try five. Yeah, that's a bit better. So he's kind of moving in the same rate. So I've got animation working for him moving right, but he's kind of moonwalking when he goes left. So let's address that now. Uh, and this, now that I've kind of built in this um, basics of it, it's going to be quite easy to add because I basically just used the exact same pictures, but I just flipped them around the x-axis. So I'm just going to mirror the exact same images. I don't even need to load in images of him looking to the left. So first of all, I need to add in another list here for images of left. So I'll just copy this one down, change the name, and everything else in here stays the same. I basically still loaded my image the same as I did before, and I have my image right, which is scaled to this 1480 pixels. But now I also need an image left. So image left is just going to be the same as image right, but it's going to be flipped. So I can use pygame.transform, just as I did above for scale, but this time I'm using dot .flip. So flip is going to take the image, which is image right, and then it's going to flip it on the axis. So the inputs here are x-axis and y-axis. Well, I want to flip on the y-axis, which is the vertical, so that he, instead of facing right, faces left. So I say true, and then for the y-axis, I don't want it to flip because then it'll be upside down. So I say false. That's going to generate an image left from image right. Now I need to make sure I do the exact same thing with my list down here. So I'll just, whoops, I'll just copy that one down, and I'll change this. Instead of right, I change this to left. So images left append my left side image. Okay, so that's fine. That's all added in. Uh, the only thing I want to control additionally is the direction that he's facing in. So I'm going to add an extra variable here, self.direction equals zero. So we'll just start off as nothing, and then I will control it as I go. 
and I'll control it within this update loop. So let me just run the code, make sure I haven't made any errors. Okay, it's all fine. So again, nothing's actually updating in when he moves left, but I know that it's loaded in into the code. So now I want to use that direction variable to determine whether I'm going to access right or whether I'm going to access left. And this direction variable is going to be changed when I press the right and left arrow keys. So when I press the right arrow key, I'm just going to say that direction equals one. I'm just going to pick a positive value because he's moving to the right. X, uh, the X coordinate is increasing. So let's just say direction is one. And when he press left, well, the X coordinate decreases. So I'm just going to call this one negative one. So now I have a way of controlling whether I'm moving left or right. And that means that when I come into this animation section, I can just add a few extra lines here to make sure that I pick the right image depending on the direction. So instead of just automatically picking an image uh, from the right list, I'm going to in add an if statement here. And I'm just going to look for the direction. So if self.direction is 1, that means the player is moving to the right. So what I had here was indeed correct. So I just need to indent this line. So self.image is going to be from my images right list at that self.index. So now I can just copy this line down. And this is going to change to negative one. So if I'm moving to the left, then the image becomes the same thing, but it gets taken from the left list. Okay, so let's run this code now, see what happens. So I'm moving right, I'm uh, moving left, and it's fine. So it flips back and forth between right and left. However, notice one thing, when I'm moving left and I let go, he flips back to the right. And the reason for that should be pretty clear in here. The check that I'm doing is if I'm not holding left and I'm not holding right, reset the counter, reset the index, and then the image is taken from the right list. So I just need to add this exact same code back up here. And in fact, I should be able to just copy it. I'll copy this up here and delete this line. So it's just doing the exact same check. It's just this time I've let go of the arrow key. So if direction is one and I'm moving to the right hand side, then take the image from the right list. If our direction is negative one, then take the image from the left list. So let's try this again. Moving to the right is fine. Moving to the left, I stop and that's fine still. Okay, so I think that's working pretty well now. I've got the animation working for a little guy and he can run back and forth. Uh, I don't have one for jumping just simply because this uh, the sprites that I've got don't have one for, for him in the air. So when he's jumping, the animation continues as if he's walking. But of course, that is something that you could build on. You could add in an extra set of images uh, and be controlled by whenever you press the spacebar. So that pretty much covers sprite animation and animation within this platformer. And I'm going to stop the video here. So if you found this one useful, then please do leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with these, then feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.